A big part of studying, whether you're an undergraduate, a postgraduate, or an academic, is reading papers. It's something we all do, it takes up a lot of my time as an astrophysics PhD student, and it's universal, whether you're in the arts or the sciences. Reading papers is a big part of your job. And there are so many papers, and most of us access papers online these days, which makes it very difficult to keep track of anything, it's far too easy to lose stuff. So enter reference managers, bits of software that are specifically designed to help you keep track of papers better than a random folder somewhere on your laptop can. There are a few major reference managers such as Mendeley, Zotero or EndNote. I'm going to focus on Zotero in this video because it's the one that I use, but you could apply these things to any of them. But if this is the first time you're hearing of a reference manager, you might be wondering what it can do that a folder on your desktop can't. Fundamentally, what it can do is understand a paper. Rather than just downloading a nondescript PDF file that has a random title, it's going to be able to interface with the website that you're downloading the paper or the book or whatever from. It's able to tell who wrote it, when it was written, where it was published, what edition it was published and even the page numbers. It'll save a DOI, a digital object identifier, a link to where it is saved online so you can go and find that PDF again if it ever goes missing. But there will be some of you who are watching this who might be thinking, well, I could do all of this by just renaming a PDF. What does the reference manager give me that I don't get by doing that? Now, fundamentally, this comes down to the fact that we all do different things and we might be doing multiple projects and a single paper can be useful for multiple different projects. And that's the real benefit to a reference manager. But now let's have a look at Zotero, let's see how it's used and I'll show you why it's useful. Now we'll start off here on this page for an annual reviews paper on certain galactic medium. This is a review paper that is very useful to my work in astrophysics, but this could apply to just about any paper you could be looking at. This paper is a review paper, it's very long and it's applicable to loads of different things. Now I work on some stuff with removing gas from satellites, I'm also working on some stuff to do with thermal conduction. This paper is useful for both. So what I'm going to do is I'm in Chrome at the minute. There is a little extension for Zotero that will let me download this paper, the Circum Galactic Medium, into my library. So if I go back over to Zotero, this is what it looks like. This is what mine looks like. I've bumped up the font size a little bit for you guys. And if I go right up to the top and I order by date added, you'll see that this one here, the Circum Galactic Medium by Tumlison et al. has been added at... This is when I'm recording the video, I've dated the video, oh well. Now this is useful for my satellite stripping project, it is also useful for my thermal conduction project. So I want to put it into both of them. So I'll go back to my library, I'll right click here, I'll do add to collection, and I want to add it to roll of B fields, that's magnetic fields, stripping of galaxies. Add it in there, and you'll see circumgladic medium by Tumlinson in this project. I also want to add it to my thermal conduction project. We're going to ignore the fact it's already there. We'll copy it in there by just clicking and dragging. And here it is, it's been added as well. There's one instance of this paper that exists for both. And I'll be able to prove that to you because reference managers are more than just managers of where a paper is saved. They're also able to be used as, as PDF viewers. You can annotate, you can do all those sorts of things. So I'm in the Magnetic Fields project, I'm going to open up the Circum Galactic Medium in here. I've got a dark mode on here, which is why it's looking like this. But I can say, highlight this first, this first sentence saying the gas surrounding galaxies is the Circum Galactic Medium, and I can make that bright yellow. I can highlight it in yellow. Now if I go to, the, if I close that down, I go to the Thermal Conductions version, I open up the same thing, the annotation stays. This is really useful. It means you can highlight things and keep notes, and it means you've not got multiple different versions of the same paper floating about in your computer. Because you may have put this paper in a folder for the Magnetic Fields project and annotated it in whatever PDF viewer you're using, and then thought, oh, I'm taking notes on that bit, but then you go and look for it in your thermal conduction project and none of those annotations are there. You've not got this one document that you can find. And beyond this, reference managers can completely revolutionize the way that you deal with papers because there's something we've not talked about. We talked a lot about how they manage papers, how they manage your organization, but then there's the reference part because a massive part of doing any research is writing up your results, communicating your results to other people. 
and we need to be able to cite things. You can't just say, yeah, trust me, bro. It doesn't work like that in academia. We have to be able to cite our sources. And this can be a massive pain if you've got to do everything manually. Now, if you work in the sciences in particular, you may have been using LaTeX to write your papers or your reports or whatever you need to cite something in. And this is where reference managers really come in, because they can generate citations either in plain text format, but also in formats for LaTeX. So if we go back over here, I've synced this up with the Zotero Cloud, and then if I go over to Overleaf, I can refresh this this document, this uh, this thesis.bib, which is just pulling the references from my Zotero library. And here we can see the Tumlinson entry, Tumlinson Circumgalactic 2017, which is the paper that we downloaded earlier. And all I have to do to reference this in a LaTeX document is backslash site, and then that key there, and it will give me everything. It will put it in the text, in the format that I ask for. It will put it in the bibliography, in the format that I want, and it's brilliant. It makes life so much easier. You don't have to chase down references anywhere near as much if you're using a reference manager like Zotero, Mendeley, EndNote, or anything else. Now, you don't have to use Mendeley or Zotero or EndNote for this, especially if you don't need the BibTeX citation stuff. I know people that will use Notion because they can have the notes for their papers as well as the links and everything else all in the one place. If that's all you need, then Notion may well be perfect for you. If you don't have access through a university email address to the Plus Plan, then you can get that with a link in the video description because I'm a Notion ambassador. I do get a little kickback with that, just so you know. But I hope this has been a really informative video. If you haven't tried using a reference manager before, then I hope you give it a go. It can be really useful and I've been using them for years. If you use them, then let me know which ones do you use? Do you use Zotero as well? Do you use Mendeley? Do you use something else? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you're looking for something else to watch, there's some recommended viewing on screen. Please come join us over on the Discord server. We've got a nice little community going on over there. And all that's left to do is like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.